Hi. In this video, we will discuss basic differentiation rules. Recall that the derivative of a function at a point is defined as the limit of slopes of secant lines. But computing the derivative from its definition can be a long and a complicated process. Instead, we can use differentiation rules, which can be derived from the definition of the derivative as a limit. These rules can be used to quickly differentiate many commonly used functions. Let's begin by presenting seven basic rules without proof. If C and alpha are real numbers, then C prime, the derivative of a constant function, is equal to zero. The derivative of x to the alpha is equal to alpha times x to the alpha minus one. This is called the power rule. The derivative of e to the x is equal to e to the x. If f and g are two differentiable functions, then we have the following. The derivative of c times f is equal to c times the derivative of f, where c is a constant number. The derivative of f plus or minus g is equal to the derivative of f plus or minus the derivative of g. The derivative of f times g is equal to the derivative of f times g plus f times the derivative of g. This is the product rule. And finally, the derivative of f divided by g at x is equal to f prime of x times g of x minus f of x times g prime of x divided by g of x squared. This is the quotient rule. Now let's try out a few examples. Differentiate the function y equals 5x cubed plus x. This function is the sum of two functions, and so the derivative y prime will be equal to the derivative of 5x cubed plus the derivative of x. According to the power rule, the derivative of x cubed is 3x squared, and the derivative of x is 1. So when we combine these results, we get 15x squared plus 1. Differentiate the function y equals square root of x plus 5 to the 4. Note that this function can be written as x to the 1 half plus 5 to the 4. According to the power rule, the derivative of x to the 1 half would be 1 half times x to the negative 1 half. And the derivative of 5 to the 4, which is a constant, is 0. And so the final answer can be written as 1 divided by 2 root x. In this example, we need to find d to the x of root x times e to the x. d to the x is just another notation for the derivative of a function. So what we need to do here is to differentiate the product, square root of x times e to the x. According to the product rule, the derivative of this product will be equal to the derivative of the first factor, x to the 1 half times e to the x, plus x to the 1 half times the derivative of the second factor, which is e to the x. The derivative of x to the 1 half can be computed using the power rule, and the derivative of e to the x is just equal to e to the x. So overall we get 1 half times x to the negative 1 half times e to the x, plus x to the 1 half times e to the x. This expression can be written as e to the x over 2 root x, plus e to the x times root x. And we can even factor e to the x from each term and get e to the x times 1 over 2 root x plus root x. In the fourth example, we need to find the derivative of f of x equals 2x divided by the cube root of x to the 7 plus 3. Note that the cube root of x to the 7 is the same as x to the power of 7 over 3. Using the quotient rule, we conclude that f prime of x will be equal to the derivative of the numerator, 2x, times the denominator, x to the 7 over 3 plus 3, minus the numerator, 2x, times the derivative of the denominator, x to the 7 over 3 plus 3. This we have to divide by the square of the denominator, which is x to the 7 over 3, 
plus 3 squared. The derivative of 2x is 2, and the derivative of x to the 7 over 3 can be computed using the power rule. When we do that, we get 2 times x to the 7 over 3 plus 3 minus 2x times 7 over 3 x to the 4 over 3 divided by x to the 7 over 3 plus 3 squared. Let's simplify the numerator and get 2 times x to the 7 over 3 plus 2 times 3 which is 6 minus 14 over 3 times x to the 7 over 3. All of that is still divided by x to the 7 over 3 plus 3 squared. Note that the first and the third term in the numerator are both multiples of x to the 7 over 3, and so we can combine them to get negative 8 over 3 times the cube root of x to the 7 plus 6 divided by the same denominator cube root of x to the 7 plus 3 squared. And that's the derivative of f. As you can see, finding derivatives using the differentiation rules is much faster and easier than using the limit definition. Before continuing to the next example, I would like to mention and emphasize a few things. First, as we've seen, we often need to use more than one rule to differentiate a function. There may be more than one way to find a derivative of a function, and there are several ways to denote derivatives, other than using the prime notation. Also remember that derivatives can be used to find equations of tangent lines, and this is something we will do in one of our next examples. So let's summarize. Different symbols can be used to denote derivatives, such as d to the x, y prime, f prime of x, and then dy to the x at x equals a, and f prime of a, these both denote the derivative of a function at the point where x equals a. Also, we will see that sometimes there is more than one way to compute the derivative of a given function. And finally, the derivative can be used to find the equation of a tangent line to the graph of a function. And we will see that in one of our next examples. With these remarks in mind, let's move on to example number 5. Differentiate y equals 6x to the 2 alpha plus 17 lambda x cubed e to the x, where alpha and lambda are constants. Alpha and lambda will be treated as fixed numbers, and so the derivative of the first term will be 6 times the derivative of x to the 2 alpha, which can be computed using the power rule. The derivative of the second term will be 17 lambda times the derivative of x cubed e to the x, which can be computed using the product rule. We get the following. y prime is equal to 12 alpha times x to the 2 alpha minus 1 plus 17 lambda times 3x squared e to the x plus x cubed e to the x. We can simplify by factoring x squared and e to the x and get 12 alpha x to the 2 alpha minus 1 plus 17 lambda x squared e to the x times 3 plus x. Now let's move on to our last example, example number 6. Let f of x equal 6x cubed plus x squared divided by 8x to the 9. a. Differentiate f in two ways. And b. Find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at x equals 1. Let's start with part a. Since f of x is a quotient of two polynomials, we can use the quotient rule to compute the derivative. When we do that, we get f prime of x is equal to the derivative of the numerator, 18x squared plus 2x, times the denominator, 8x to the 9, minus the numerator, 6x cubed plus x squared, times the derivative of the denominator, 72x to the 8. All of that is divided by the denominator squared, which is 64x to the power of 18. Using simple algebra, we can simplify and get negative 8x to the 10 times 36x plus 7 divided by 64 times x to the power of 18. After dividing top and bottom by 8x to the 10, we obtain negative 36x plus 7 divided by 8x to the 8. 
But there is another way. We can first simplify the function and write it as 1 over 8 times x to the negative 9 multiplying 6x cubed plus x squared and expand to get 3 quarters x to the negative 6 plus 1 over 8 times x to the negative 7. Now we don't need a quotient rule to differentiate and using mainly the power rule we get f prime of x is equal to negative 9 over 2 times x to the negative 7 minus 7 over 8 times x to the negative 8. Using simple algebra we can easily see that we obtain the same expression negative 36x plus 7 divided by 8x to the 8. Now let's move on to part b where we need to find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at x equals 1. We start by computing f of 1 which is the y value of the point of tangency. f of 1 is equal to 6 times 1 plus 1 divided by 8 times 1 which is 7 over 8. Next we compute f prime of 1 which is the slope of our tangent line. Using the expression obtained in part a we conclude that f prime of 1 is equal to negative 36 times 1 plus 7 divided by 8 times 1. This is equal to negative 43 divided by 8. Now we know that the tangent line, whose equation will have the form y equals mx plus b, has slope equals to negative 43 over 8, and that it passes through the point of tangency 1 comma 7 over 8. So b, which is equal to y minus mx, can be computed by plugging in the right values for x, y, and m, and it will be equal to 7 over 8 minus negative 43 over 8, which is equal to 25 divided by 4. So we conclude that y equals negative 43 over 8 x plus 25 over 4 is the equation of the tangent line to the graph of f at x equals 1. In this diagram we see the graph of the function f in blue, the point of tangency 1 comma 7 over 8 and the tangent line in green whose equation we found in this example. Computing derivatives is something that not only mathematicians do. Scientists, statisticians and engineers are working with derivatives all the time. You should remember these rules as you will be using them throughout your calculus course and probably also in some of your future courses as well. You should spend some time practicing these rules and you can start by working on the problems provided at the end of this video. We hope to see you again in one of our next videos. Thank you for watching and good luck.